everybody, and welcome to the John Campion Relationship Hour, where today <laughs> we break down John Roca's latest date on a play-by-play -play no! analysis on everything that went right and everything that went wrong. Oh. And then we're going to talk a little bit about The Flash. <laughs> the Flash had its mid-season finale tonight. Hey, uh, we just got finished watching it. We're going to talk about, we're gonna talk about some of the things we liked about it, some of the things we didn't like about it. Maybe some guesses where things are going to pick back up once we come back after the little bit of a break. I'm going to introduce people around the table. First of all, sitting over here, David. David, how are you doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm really looking forward to the John Campier relationship hour because it's, <laughs> the game is real and it's a struggle out there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm struggling out there. I need some help. <laughs> John Rook is sitting right over here. John, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. I need some Jesus apparently as well. So yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to talking about this. And Zoom and Patty Spivet. Let's get it on. And Corey Takeo over there at the hey, end. Corey, how you hey, doing? Hey, Aaron, I'm good. I have no relationship problems. <laughs> oh, wait a second. You got, you, you got a little bit of $200 sushi on here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. That's sorry. That's an inside joke of some stuff that's been going on here oh. a little bit before the camera started. I hope well, he's anyway, not watching. Flash. I don't even know what episode this was. What was the number? Episode nine. Nice. Episode nine. Running on standstill. Running, running on, on running standstill. Running to standstill. Still standstill. Sorry. Yeah. yeah that's a nice little uh, U two <laughs> lyric. I was just gonna there. say that's a great song. That by one. the way, um, wow. They started off. Yeah. With. Like Weathermaster come back and Spartacus uh -huh. is invading Rome again, so he's come back. <laughs> he's I'm so glad he broke out the trickster, uh, and of course uh, then he, and he breaks out. We were wondering, okay, at what point does Cold get out of prison? Because we knew he would at some point, so yeah. that's all fine. So David, let's start with you. Things you liked about tonight's episode of The Flash, this well, mid-season finale. More than like, John, I loved seeing Mark Hamill as a trickster. He yes. is fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. I know he's in the old Flash show, but for me, when I hear that voice, I think of the Joker from the Batman, the animated mm -hmm. series. Oh, as yeah. a kid, that's what I watched. So I just, he's just the Joker. Yeah. He's fantastic. He's perfect. And it's so crazy because in a few days, John, you before most of us are going to be seeing Star Wars The Force Awakens, and he's hopefully we're going to see him in there too, so it's great to see him doing his thing. Um, just all the villains. I could see a whole episode of those three guys mm -hmm. going on like a big crime caper or oh, something yeah. like that. I would love to see that. But, uh, of course, I think we knew that Cold, he, he's not completely a bad guy. You know, even Barry called him out oh, yeah. saying, you know, it's like, you're not really being a very great villain this week yeah. either. But just the opening of seeing Zoom in the whole Merry Christmas thing, that was the perfect yeah, opening. Christmas. I didn't know we were going to get a Christmas-themed episode. I thought that was fantastic, too. There's a lot of twists and turns I didn't see coming this week. But the villains, I feel like those three guys made it this week, especially Trickster, play, play, played by Mark Hamill. He's fantastic. Now, if Zoom in that beginning had Wells... And he says, Merry Christmas. And then squeezed his nose and went, honk. <laughs> I would have, I, would have I mean, I already loved tonight's episode, but that would have taken it like, to a new level yeah. for me. Anyway, uh, Roka, what about you? What are some things you liked about oh, tonight's God, episode? Oh, God, there's so much. I absolutely love the episode. I thought it was so much fun from beginning to end. And there were, I didn't feel that there were any slow points. I mean, there was some great acting going on, too, by Iris. She did a great job with that whole sequence when she was telling uh, Barry about Wally West. We got Wally West tonight, which was so awesome to see again, uh, to see that happen. And, and, you know, we get that little button at the end uh with zoom as well coming back and then we get jesse quick back and they're like that was a hardcore scene too mm -hmm. and tom cab i just love kavanaugh every time he appears on the yeah. show because he yeah. really like i've said before he just anchors the show everyone else is doing great work i love this show so much but kavanaugh does such fantastic work to anchor it in a really solid place mm -hmm. and he did great work again tonight and i just i just love that and wentworth miller I, I, he's yeah. such a marvel to watch yeah. such a joy to, i mean i was mark hamill was perfect timing with force awakens but i really love how much wentworth miller enjoys being captain cold and it brings you in as a fan to be like oh this is so much fun to watch i didn't him. even like him at first yeah, as yeah. captain cold and now I'm just chomping at the bit for him to get more and more screen time. Yeah. It was funny you mentioned that scene with Laurel. I thought we had uh, uh, Laurel. Oh, dear God. <laughs> no. Uh, no. With the no. scenes with Iris because I honestly feel like we got the two best scenes yeah. out of Iris than we have in this entire series, not just season, mm, series. Number one, the conversation she had with Barry at first when she reveals to Barry mm. the fact that Joe has a son. Yeah. I felt it. It was real. You know what I really like? The writing of that scene was good too because... What would a lot of us been saying, and probably a lot of us were saying, oh my gosh, you got this character who gets all mad and pouty at Barry and Joe for keeping the secret that, that he's right. the Flash. And what did they do? They got ahead of that. And they had the character say that. I was so yeah. mad at you guys holding this back for me, mm -hmm. and I'm holding it back. It's like, yes, I wish the writers of all these various shows would take a cue from that, yep. get ahead of it, address what the audience is already thinking, and have the character own it themselves. Yeah. I thought that was great, and the way she handled the motion with Barry, and then mm -hmm. ultimately the conversation with Joe. Yeah. I, 
I honestly think those are the two best, most well-acted scenes we have seen from the character in writing terms and from the actress in a performance terms mm -hmm. in this whole series. I, I really loved it the yeah. way they did And you're right again, Wentworth Miller, man. I, I, I just, I can't remember the last time I had a show where I so disliked a character at first. I didn't yeah. dislike him for long, but I really thought this is cheesy and dumb. And the more it's gone on, I've just grown to really appreciate him <laughs> so much. Absolutely. And one of the few things I'm looking forward to in, in Legends of Tomorrow, because yeah. I'm not actually, uh, I'm yeah. skeptical about that show. But anyway, yeah. Corey, what about you? The things you liked about tonight's I episode? I mean, what's there not to like about this episode? It was so solid. Um, what you guys said, the villains, I, I think they were great, especially Mark Hamill for me. I, I, I love when he's there. And he, he, like, he like you said, he reminds me of Batman Arkham series and the Joker and he's so smart and eloquent and, and goofy and crazy and insane. He's the most believable villain for me mm -hmm. in this episode. And also uh, I really like that we saw Wally West. Yeah. He didn't just address yeah. who he yeah. was, but we got to see him even though it was at the end. And I we can't take away how great Zoom is and how yeah. great Zoom looks. And when Zoom and um, Tom Cavanaugh are together these scenes are just crazy. Yeah. They're, mm -hmm. they're creepy and you want to know what's going to happen next. And then the reveal leading into the mid end of the season, mid season finale, it was just a perfect episode for me. I mean, how much of a beast is zoom? I mean, he's, yeah. he's talking to Wells, having a conversation and he's going in between realities, just basically like between earth, yeah. you know, yeah. going, grabbing his daughter, throwing him here yeah. or throwing her there and then going away and then coming back with her again, just taunting him with her and all that. I mean, he's such a cool villain. I mean, he's yeah. incredible. Yeah. He's great. But for me, my pauses start with Mark Hamill. I, like, yeah. just reflect like what you guys said. Every line he spoke, mm -hmm. I was grinning like an idiot. <laughs> I'm sitting in the chair, I got a pizza in my lap, I'm like, like every line, like what says Christmas more than piling corpses or whatever it was yeah. he's like every line he said was poetic and fun. And if I'm gonna critique any of it, it's the fact that it reminded me a little bit too much of the Joker. Uh, okay. With the way he would voice Joker, yeah. but hey, it's all him, so yeah. that's fine. I really liked the reveal at the end with Zoom's ultimate plan. Mm -hmm. Because you know, when Zoom appears to Kavanaugh in the basement of the facility, it's like, should I go upstairs and tell your friends? It's like, well, why don't you just go upstairs and kill them all right now? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can do this. Why didn't you kill Barry when you had the chance? Blah, 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 blah. The revealing the plan that I'm trying to motivate him to get stronger and faster, more powerful, so I can have more power to steal. The way Kavanaugh put it, you know, he's like a Christmas turkey. You're trying to just fatten up. It makes everything make sense. Yep. And that is really refreshing from a team writer's yeah, show to, to reveal the plan and have the, like a lot of times these types of shows will reveal the villain's master plan and for a minute they're like, wait a minute, why would he do? Yeah. But when Zoom revealed it through Kavanaugh, it's like, yeah, yeah. that mm -hmm. totally makes sense. Um, so I love that as well. We already talked a little about Wentworth Miller, the performance by Joe as well. I mean, yeah. oh, again, God, yeah. he is he's like a man among boys in this show. I mean, he's the true, he's on the next level of, yeah. of being an actor and it, that kind of shows in the show a lot of the times. And uh, overall, I just thought a really, really strong episode. So let's talk for a few minutes then about some of the negatives or some of the things we thought could have been handled a little bit better. And I will start. And <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to guess that all of us would probably put this in number one, but, I, but I'd be curious to hear if any of you wouldn't put this as your number one worst part of the show. Uh, Peace Pivot, um, all of a sudden, like, talking to Flash, her second conversation ever in life with Flash, and she's sitting there telling him her life story. Only, yep. my dad wasn't supposed to go to the bank that day. I was going to school, <laughs> and I was supposed to go to the bank. It's like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Like she's the second conversation where she's just spilling her heart out and everything. I'm like, <laughs> oh my god! And I'm not, I'm not pinning that on the character. Right. I'm not. I, I'm just in a show in an episode that was so well written. Nothing can be perfect. This was the that was the one big imperfection for me. Um, but also the one other thing that I would have liked to have seen was they end off the three way conversation between Trickster, Weathermaster, and Captain Cold with them saying like saying to one with Miller. So what's it going to be? And then the next time we see Wentworth Miller, he's just in Barry's house. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen that argument. I would have liked mm -hmm. to have seen that argument saying, pass, and walking out only the way he could. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it's it's an Aces episode. I really liked what I saw. David, what are some things that maybe didn't work so well for you? My issue, it's with uh, Peace Pivot's... Um I guess her. It's not. It's not her. She didn't do anything wrong yeah. this week. It's just. I guess. I know. I'm not. I want Peace Pivot to live. I love Peace Pivot, but I have an issue with. Um, okay, so last week. Now correct me if I'm wrong. Last week she wrong. shot Harrison Wells. 
Yes. She went did. for the kill shot. Yeah. Trying to yeah. kill that mofo. She did. Still 15 feet from her, but he took one step but towards this her. this week, it's like they don't really address that. I mean, she almost slips and says, oh, but Harrison Wells is alive. You know, like talking very like, right. oh, you know, but she doesn't really like, there's no... She's not. Getting up She's not reacting. Well, there's yeah. no. There's no consequence for that. Yeah. Like she just right. seems to be like, well, Harrison Wells is back, and now that Weather Wizard's here, now I have a new. I didn't even enemy. think of that. You know, that's the thing. Yeah, her the, shooting was cleared the, apparently by the department. If you almost kill somebody that you think, think is dead, did. yeah, right. And Joe uh, like says, "Get out of here, leave, Patty." Yeah. And she doesn't even react to that. Like, there's no reaction. There's no conversation about. It. They don't even address it. It's like it's a whole. It's like okay, Weather Wizard's here, so now this guy killed my dad, so now I'm gonna get him. But what happened about last week? Right. What about last week's repercussions? Well, she has to account for the bullets. Like, so logically, she would have to say where the bullets go. Yeah. You know, so she's have to account. I mean, can you imagine? Hurt. Can you imagine if Harrison so, Wells actually took up Barry's offer and showed up for Christmas dinner? Yeah. Like, oh, oh, hey, hey, right. you're the just almost true. killed me. Yeah, that's, nice good point. that's the last time he that's saw her. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's, just, it's like they just kind of swept under the rug. Yeah. I didn't get that. And you know, here's the other thing. The girl that shoots Harrison Wells, right. who took one step towards her and she dropped him, like went, mm -hmm. went for the kill shot, right? Yeah. That girl who then thinks so far ahead that she brings the anti-flash mm -hmm. boot gun oh, yeah. to, ta to immobilize right. Flash first. Like she has thought this through so well. Mm -hmm. Immobilize him first. She's that, she ain't hesitating. When she go, she got the guy on the ground, she's going, I'm shooting him. And if she doesn't just shoot right away because she wants to say, give it to him a little bit verbally, she ain't changing her mind suddenly. Right. Yeah. Just because Flash, the guy she's had two conversations with prior to this, says, oh, think of your family or whatever it was that he said. <laughs> she is... She's pulling a Mortal Kombat and finish him. That's what she's going to do. She's going to pull that no. trigger. So you're right. That that was really an inconsistency. I think it would have been more interesting if she would have shot him. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. We that would be a much more interesting story. Yeah. We we're all sitting yeah. there going, do it. Do it. Yeah. yeah. She, she as a character would have become a lot more interesting as a character. Yeah. But my yeah. one question too is, before she pulls up, there are already three cop cars at the end of the street courting out. Where were all the other cops? As she just drives through and gets out with a gun and playing. Yeah. Where were the other cops? There's just all like, those witnesses to see her do that. It'll work out. Don't <laughs> worry about it. I don't know, Rocco, what about you? What are some of the things that didn't work so well? So well I, for you? I agree with what you mentioned earlier, John, that we didn't see the conversation between the three of them to yeah. where, where where the wizard gets out of. But we also didn't see the conversation between between uh, Joe, Joe and, and Francine. And yeah. Like mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, they just came to terms with everything. They didn't want to hire her to come back to the I guess episode. So. They must have been Vanessa Williams. They were like, mm, she did all right <laughs> in the first couple of maybe we're not bring her back but i felt that was so weird because it's like it's so important for him to have the conversation with her about wally west like hey i'm sorry for 20 years i should have found you hey i you know i hid the sun from mm -hmm. you too like that was an important scene to not have in, in, the, show. in the show's defense i'll say this i'll say this in the show's defense yeah that once because i was feeling the same way yeah but two things once wally showed up at the door i all of a sudden didn't care that i missed that right. conversation yeah. oh, okay and it almost felt more surprising to me because if they had set it up with this big heart to heart conversation, whatever, I just would have been waiting there for this episode to have Wally showed up. Yeah. Because they didn't show that conversation, I wasn't expecting him to show up this episode right. when he did. So kind of set that up. The other thing I'll defend, although you're absolutely right, that is a scene <laughs> that should have been on screen. But in its defense, I don't know what scene in the in the episode tonight I would have taken out. Oh, well, that's fair. To put that one in Maybe in the mistletoe place. scene between G Jay no, Garrick we, and we, her. We, <laughs> okay, <that laughs> because Cisco is you know, riffing off that, being like, yeah. oh, come that on. Oh, like, that relationship yeah, that is fine. driving yeah. me yeah. insane. Yeah. That relationship is driving me insane. Uh, I will, What's I, Christmas? I will say, <laughs> as, an, as a counter to the Patty Spivet thing, I think she was more proactive in this episode, which maybe papered over yeah. some of the stuff that you guys have issues with. And I, and I think you're valid to have those issues. But I liked having her be pro more proactive. And I was worried what we've predicted is the fact that she might go evil. Like, when she shot that gun, like, to think that far ahead to stabilize the flash like where did she get that yeah, i'm gonna take down the flash yeah. number one and it then was I'm interesting shoot this dude. uh my other negative is that uh, uh everyone in the town seems to have secrets and then everyone bitches that everyone else has secrets so it's just a weird thing that i, I, I see in all these cw shows <laughs> it's like why are you hiding things from me oh, i gotta hide this from him wait you just said i couldn't hide things from you now you're hiding things from me. i don't understand it's a pretty realistic thing though we is all it? have secrets don't we i guess well, I maybe don't. you don't hold no secrets. i don't I like don't to have secrets <laughs> Anyway, go what about you, Corey? What are some things that maybe could have been better for you? I mean, uh, disclaimer, I, I like Patty as a character. I think she's a great character. <laughs> no, she is. And she she has the opportunity to be a really strong uh, a female role in the on The Flash. However, she's so inconsistent, at least for me, mm -hmm. that it bothers me that this episode, like you mentioned, She's being left in the dark all the time. Granted, she doesn't really know that. But then suddenly she has she knows how it feels to be left in the dark, yet she wants to leave Barry in the dark. Yeah. Eventually they save that like they do a lot of times when she says she wants to tell Barry everything. That's fine. But also, 
how she suddenly wanted to kill, like you mentioned, mm. when and but she hesitated and was scared. And this is the guy that she really, really wanted to destroy because he killed her dad. But then last episode, she just had no hesitation. Yeah. She's just not consistent. She's just inconsistent. Mm. And I, I have a problem with that. And look, we all know. We'll get to this in the questions. <laughs> Patty is here as a fattened calf. Stop <laughs> it! She is a sacrificial lamb. It reminds me a lot of like when we were watching Smallville. The moment Lois Lane showed up in oh, Smallville, yeah. you knew well everything else is off the table, <laughs> and anything else that happens between Clark and any of these other girls is all temporary because Lois is here. Anyway, speaking of uh, of uh, Peace Biv and what her fate might be. <laughs> We asked you guys to send in some Twitter questions. And how do you tweet some questions to us? It's simple. Once you watch, watch The Flash, jump on Twitter and tweet out using the hashtag CollidorFlash and send on in a question. We picked out a couple just before the show started, and we're going to get to those right now. So, Dennis, what's the first one we got here? This one comes from <laughs> Michael Harian, who writes... Do you think that Patty, well, what a coincidence, this is the first one. Do you think that Patty is going to <laughs> die next episode based on the preview? For those of you who don't know what Michael's talking about, you know, at the end of each episode, there goes, next week time on The Flash. And they'll, so we see them talking about, Barry, Zoom will find out who you care about. And then you see Peace Bibs, and then Zoom gets her and all this kind of stuff. Okay, so here's, here's the thing. Um, if anything, them showing that in the preview for next week 100% guarantees that Patty ain't dying oh, next yeah. week. Yeah. 100% oh. that Patty ain't dying yeah, next ain't week. ain't dying. If okay. they didn't show that in the trailer, and somebody said to me, hey, do you think there's a chance Patty might die next week? I say, maybe. But when they show that, ooh, Patty could die next week, guarantee she's not. Um, but she's, at some point, she's going to bite it. It ain't going to be next week. It's not going to be next week. Maybe not even by the end of the season, although I do think it'll be by the end of the season. Uh, but like I said, Patty's just the fattened calf. She's the sacrificial lamb. She is the placeholder. She is the transitional champion. She is all those temporary things you can say and more before they offer in some grand glorious thing that'll get Barry all mad and Iris will be there to console him. So anyway. Uh, <laughs> look at poor Roka over yeah, there. Look at him. Roka, do, do you think Patty's going to die next week? Not next week. And I don't I, think so either. And I don't think she's going to die in the, episode, in the season at all. And she's so there's there's such beautiful chemistry, but you're right, John. I'm the way they're laying the groundwork with stuff. The way there's like he had that scene with Wells through the window near the end of the episode where yeah. he's like, you know, you said I couldn't be happy, you know, but I have to forgive you. That's such a setup that she's he's she's going to well, die. He's gonna be yeah. I mean, because he's supposed to end up with Iris in the comics, and I'm sure they'll stay faithful to that relationship as the season or show progresses. But I I'm so sad that if they if they take her off because I love her on the show. I think she brings a lot to the show and she gives Grant Gustin someplace else to go besides Star Labs and besides Brooding Town, you know? Mm. And so I, 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 that's what I like about her, but you're probably you know, right. You know what? An argument <sighs> to be made for her surviving. Here's an argument to be made for her surviving. One thing that these TV shows all do horribly mm -hmm. and Flash is no exception. We've already seen it happen. All, one of the things all these shows do, shows do absolutely horribly is breakups. They do breakups yeah. terribly. It's like real life. Because they can have, <laughs> except, except it's the opposite of real life. Because they can have a 10 story arc. I remember, uh, it's going top of another show. I remember like the sh uh, a show I watched, uh, New Girl. Remember oh, yeah. New Girl, they had built up this big romantic relationship between Jess and I think it's uh, uh, McDermott. Um, yeah. That would, yeah. yeah. Remember? Yep. Had this long story arc and then to the point where she's thinking she loves him a lot. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, one episode is. Yeah, I don't think we should see each other anymore. Right. And then it's done, and then it's gone. They've already done it in the Flash where he's building this relationship with Linda. Like he's even starting to oh, get yeah. intimate, and then all of a sudden, um, yeah, I don't. I, I think you have unresolved issues with Iris. And then just nice and clean. Uh -huh. That then it's just done. So that might go towards maybe there'll be a way where they'll have like a season or two season long romance between Barry and uh, and Peace. We have, and all of a sudden, pal, just go. You know, I just think I need to do something different. And then that'll be yep. it. That'll be nice yeah. and clean because they're so bad at it. <laughs> and Corey, what about you? Do you think Peace Bib is going to die this coming episode or is she sticking around for a while? This is what I think. I don't think she's going to die in the next episode, even though she gets uh, kidnapped by Zoom. I think she's in the safe zone until Barry reveals himself yeah. to be the Flash. Yep. Good point. Yep. Good, good <laughs> point. Yeah, yeah but, once, once he reveals his identity, then you're in the danger zone. Yeah. <laughs> See, these that preview though, it shows Barry. He he says that he's going to reveal. 
But then, like yeah. the, the caption comes up, like he's one minute too late or something yeah. like that. Yes. And Peace Pivot gets taken away. So I don't know. I think it could be the end of her. But I don't want to put her in the grave. I want to see Peace Pivot more. But I think it might be the end of her. I think it, 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 we, we have a while. We have a break. We're not coming back until January maybe, 19th. Maybe they're doing a reverse kind of yeah. mental thing here. Where, like, oh, they're going to show you the preview it. Yeah. that'll make you think she's totally exactly. sane. Yep. But they really, oh, okay, well, what's yeah. the next question? What's the next question we got up here? Uh, Mr. K writes, how will Wally get his powers? Love you guys. Hashtag Love you too. It's uh, a, a terrific question. I mean, we know how Barry got them. Are they going to reinvent um, you know, the wheel at this point? But here's something to th keep in mind. Who says he ever has to get powers? I mean, we got Wally West. I mean, we know what Wally West is in the comics. We understand right. that. But this ain't the comics of the TV show. Now, look, money says he's going to get speed powers. Okay, he is. But, I mean, who says he can't? Why not just have Wally West? And he's just... We've already got Jay Garrick. we got another speedster there. So, um, so, I don't know. How will he get his powers? If they give him powers at all. I have no clue. Maybe he already gonna... has them. And he doesn't really know how to manipulate oh, them. And he's just not sharing it with yeah. anybody. Yeah. He's no. got this. Okay. Maybe he's born with the speed force. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, that's what I, I think. I think with, with what Zoom is doing, it'll be an indirect result that Wally gets his powers because he's going to make uh, mm -hmm. Barry faster and faster. And Wally might be there. Because if they've shown anything, it's they like to tell Barry's secrets and then everybody gets access to Star Labs. Mm -hmm. So it seems yeah. like Wally's going to be in Star Labs before we know it. And there's going to be some kind of accident. And I bet Wally's going to get hit by the speed force or somehow. And then. Uh, you know, acquire those powers or use that serum that uh, Dr. Wells ah. showed up a couple episodes and inject that into himself. So I think those are possibilities to play with. Because at the end of that episode, as Joe invites, you know, Wally in, they close the door. Uh, Wally, this is Jay. Hey, how you doing? This is Kayla. Hey, how you doing? Uh, this is Barry. Hey, I'm Barry. I'm also the Flash. Oh, wait, what did I say? Because <laughs> that's just kind of the way this this, exactly. uh, this show or Cisco goes. Tells him. <laughs> David, how does he, does he get powers? And if so, how does he get them? I think he'll get powers. But the question is after that, where does he go? Is yeah. he going to be one of those guys like, you know what? I'm going to go to Pittsburgh and I'm going to go train yeah. with uh, those yeah. other guys over there with uh, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Stein and all them. Yeah. Or is he going to like go to a different Earth? Be a different reality oh, maybe? Yeah. You know, he kind of shows up. I don't know. I mean, Earth since two. Jay doesn't have powers anymore, do they think, hey, Earth 2 needs a flash? Yeah. And Wally right. goes to exactly. Earth 2? Yeah. And great. then we just kind of see him when yeah. we need him. Yeah. Like they'll leave one portal open just in case, but I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I have no idea how he's going to get his powers in. No idea. All right, let's do take the last question here. <laughs> last question comes from Carrie Hamilton. Hamilton is my hometown, by the way. Uh, Carrie Hamilton writes, what if Zoom is Wally West from Earth 2? Body type are similar, and what? the idea of Joe's son fighting could be a nice plot device. Could be a nice plot device, but Carrie, i got to completely disagree with you on the body type. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. did not. When I saw that kid, that skinny kid stand there, I did not see Zoom. Yeah. He was pretty yeah. tall, though. He, but he wasn't as tall as Joe. But he wasn't like ripped. Right. Yeah, like, he Zoom wasn't. Was he didn't ripped. look bulky. Unless like it was just what he was wearing. Maybe maybe we'll see him next episode and we'll think, oh, wait a second, this, he's a pretty huge guy. Yeah. But he seems young. Um, I I don't see it. I just yeah. don't see it. What about you, Carrie? Could, could it be? Could he actually be Zoom? Um, if they manage to figure out a sequence which would make sense, yeah. But if, right now, I just can't imagine it being making sense or putting it together that Zoom and Wally West are the same people. Because yeah. it would have meant Wally West as a kid would have to be totally brilliant, already have the speed force, have found mm -hmm. a portal to Earth 2, gone to Earth 2, yeah. uh, did all his stuff there on Earth 2, and now he's coming back through. It, it, it's, it seems unlikely. Roka, yeah, I, know. I, I don't think so either. Yeah, I, I, I'm still stuck in the comics in my head, so... You know, I know that Zoom is someone who is a fan of the Flash and becomes a Flash from a fervent idea of wanting to be the Flash. So mm -hmm. I'm still stuck because it's, it's an evil mindset. I don't think Wally, I didn't think it radiated that. And certainly physically, he doesn't look like that at all because this guy radiates an older, more seasoned person. Yeah, and I, so I he, agree. The voice and the body. You know, so I, I would be surprised if it's, you know, it's like me and Tyler. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. I don't think he is. He's not mature enough. I don't yeah. think. This guy seems like a much older guy. But yeah. I also want to say, too, it's one of my favorite quotes for tonight, I'm off topic, but is oh. that the Godfather exists oh, gosh. in every yeah. Earth that veto. Was and, veto. That and you know what? Awesome. That line wouldn't have worked nearly as well if it was anybody other than Tom Cavanaugh <laughs> yes, saying it. Yeah. It was the fact that it was, and she said so cold, matter of fact, the Godfather exists in every reality. <laughs> yeah, that, was yeah. that, that was such a great, great line. Yep. Uh, any closing thoughts before we wrap up this episode of the recap show? 
they're starting to find these little moments like the weather was oh, no, I mean uh, as Trickster said in he's like the real war on Christmas and I'm like oh this is a little conservative reference so this mm-hmm. is an interesting thing that they're playing with in certain shows it showed up in Supergirl as well and they're all Berlanti things so I, it's fascinating to see them exploring this like just mm-hmm. making little jokes that work within our topical time frame you know what I'm saying what's going on with us so it's I, I like that that's happening you know it's, it makes the show more relatable and feels more modern mo- I don't know modern is the guess the word I would say. You know, one of the things that really stood out to me and that I realized is that when you look back to the previous Trickster episode, yeah. that episode stands in stark contrast to a lot of the rest of the series. It's a very different kind of episode. They don't usually go the silly, funny, Hong Kong ki- kind of thing. But you realize when you see him against Night, this is a show that kind of needs that every once in a oh, while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Th- this show needs that once or twice a season to, to yeah. keep to keep it at the identity that it's already established for itself. I think you need it. So I'm very glad they didn't kill Trickster off at the end of this episode. Yeah. I'm glad they uh, just wrapped him up in Christmas lights. <laughs> He's like, curses, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> I I look forward to the next time. And I don't care if it's totally ridiculous how they break him out twice a season so he can come up <laughs> with some nefarious plot to kill the Flash. I want to see at least twice a year. You have my permission as a fan to make it as silly and ridiculous as, it, as you want. Just let Mark Hamill say those awesome lines and I'll be totally on board. Well, folks, that'll do it for us then for this installment of the Flash Recap Show. Thank you so much for joining us. Once again, you can tweet to us all week long if you want because we're looking on Twitter and looking for those hashtag Collider Flash posts. Make sure you send them on in there and we get a good look at them. We are going to be taking a break now for till what, February? Uh, January 19th. January January 19th. So it's not that long of a break. So it's not like, uh, what was that? How long was the, the break in the last Breaking Bad season? Was it like a oh, six-month oh, break? Yeah. So, yeah, so it's nothing know. like that. We just got a few weeks. We're going to be off for a few weeks. So make sure you look up all the videos here in Collider Video to keep you you know, entertained and occupied until we come back. I want to thank the people sitting at the table with me, of course, over here. David, David, where can people find you online? You can find me on Twitter, at GriffinDE. And we're not on break yet with Star Wars Rebels, so check back tomorrow on Collider. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we Star got Star Wars, Wars Rebels, Rebels released next two weeks, so yeah. Nice. Sitting over here, John Roca. John, where can people find you? Uh, at the Roca says, that's my homage to The Rock. Um, we, Kari and I, uh, are one of the hosts on the Walking Dead recap show. So if you're behind on the Walking Dead re- recap show, watch them on your DVR and then watch our recap show and enjoy our analysis and our breakdown. And you can follow all the shows and podcasts that I host there as well. Of course, uh, Corey Takei. Corey, where can people find you? And while The Flash is on hiatus, Supergirl is still on next week. We will have a recap show. And it comes back January 4th. They really... Wow. Wow. I mean, they're not giving us break. any clout. <laughs> the big reveal on big Supergirl yeah. last reveal. night. Huge you guys reveal. In. Yeah, it yeah, was, last it was night. a great reveal. But anyways, you guys can follow me at K-A-O-R-I-O-U-S right down there everywhere. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> and of course, you can just follow me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just follow me at John Campia. So special thanks to Jonathan and Dennis behind the cameras and thank you to you guys for joining us make sure you jump in the comments section and leave your thoughts on everything we talked about here tonight and uh until january bye bye